Three, two, one, and liftoff. The Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. You know, there's so many applications where Yogi Berra's expression of deja vu all over again are just so applicable, because in this case, we're talking about something that should have succeeded, looked like it succeeded, but it didn't succeed, which, of course, is kind of like the statement of deja vu all over again, which also sounds right, but it isn't. And as time has gone by, we've become more and more aware of this, unfortunately. As as most of you probably know, it was recently announced that Starliner's first crewed mission has been pushed out until February, which really doesn't sound all that bad on the surface of it, because we need to keep in mind that the time that passed from the first unmanned test of Crew Dragon to the first flight of a manned Crew Dragon was actually over a year. However, something happened that kind of made that necessary. It blew up. I could watch that over and over again because those guys reacted to that event about the same way that I would have, to be quite honest. Anyway, so because this incident caused Dragon to be delayed and because Starliner is once again being delayed, that strongly suggests that that second test flight did not go swimmingly. And of course, we have some evidence of that. The docking didn't take place as planned. They had some software issues on board the ship, and most importantly, a lot of the thrusters didn't function. And all of this on top of the first unmanned test, which was a complete disaster. I'm not going to go through all the details with that. And also the next unmanned launch attempt, which didn't even happen because a bunch of malfunctioning valves that they could never even fix, and they had to swap out the service module. The list goes on and on. And the fact that NASA is delaying this next mission suggests that there are still problems, but there's an even stronger piece of evidence that supports this notion, and that is the fact that NASA just ordered more flights of Crew Dragon than they are theoretically going to need through 2030 if Starliner is indeed supposed to go into service next year. In fact, assuming that the ISS stays in service all the way through 2030, the most number of times that Starliner is going to fly if NASA remains their only customer is seven times. And this is one of the reasons that I believe that NASA is not only about to pull the plug, but that Boeing really wouldn't mind if they did. But first, the latest news from Boca Chica. Yesterday, August 31st, Booster 7 finally fired up more than one engine on a static fire. And when I say finally, I'm not actually being critical here. It's very important that SpaceX proceed with extreme caution with this booster, as they learned when they tried to spin up 33 engines and created an explosion and a rather terrifying fire. So yeah, they're being kind of careful. By the way, once again, this footage coming to us from Lab Padre. Please subscribe to their channel and please watch their coverage. They are fantastic people. So, in any event, as far as the static fire was concerned, three engines seemed to be the initial plan, but one of them powered down. That indicated that one of the engines may have experienced an abort. Some people are talking about it being an intentional thing, that they were simulating an abort, or perhaps practicing a 
staged uh, process of a static fire and eventual launch. However, if they spin up the engines one at a time during a launch, that represents a tremendous waste of fuel and a lot of stress on the launch pad. I really don't think that that happened. I think it's far more likely that we had some sort of issue on the third engine of the three that fired up. So once again, encouraging that we're having multi-engine static fires, but we clearly have a long way to go before we get to 33. So as far as the future of Starliner is concerned, a recent contract extension took place between NASA and SpaceX, and when you crunch the numbers, things don't look good for Starliner. They added an additional five missions for Crew Dragon. If they were intending to start switching off between Crew Dragon and Starliner in 2023, that means Crew Dragon would only have to fly an additional eight missions, and NASA just paid for nine. So the only way that that's going to work, just from simple math, is Starliner is not really going to start switching off with Crew Dragon until 2024 at the earliest. And as you keep crunching the numbers, the news gets even worse. You have to also consider how much money SpaceX has actually spent on their entire program as opposed to how much Boeing is spending. The entire contract between NASA and SpaceX for Crew Dragon, including all of the flights that they have bought up to this point to carry human beings to the ISS, is $4.93 billion. By way of comparison, and this may blow your mind, Boeing has spent $4.8 billion on a spacecraft that has yet to send a single human being to space. Let me say that again. NASA has now paid SpaceX about the same amount of money to send human beings to the ISS all the way through 2030 as they have paid Boeing to send nobody to space. And this is something that's never going to turn out right for Boeing. They're never going to be able to run in the black on this project. And that spells disaster because as desperate as Boeing becomes and as much money as they keep losing on this project, the more pressure they're going to feel to get this spacecraft into orbit with human beings on board come hell or high water. And we've heard these kinds of justifications in the past, and they always lead to disaster, especially with Boeing. Now keep in mind, unlike SLS, Starliner is a fixed price contract. So all of the hundreds of millions of dollars that Boeing has been going over budget on this project has been coming out of their pocket. They are charges against Boeing's future missions. So when they send human beings into space, NASA is not going to be paying them a dime to do it. And that, of course, is never going to work out. It's going to take a number of missions before they even start turning a profit, and that's if they start charging NASA $95 million per seat as opposed to the $65 million per seat that SpaceX charges. The whole thing simply can't work. It will never be profitable. And this is why I believe Boeing actually wants NASA to pull the plug on this contract. As of right now, they are only a few hundred million dollars in the red. Only a few hundred million, but it could get a lot worse if there are more problems, more cost overruns, and God forbid, a disaster involving human beings. And the news gets even worse because the $4.8 billion that Boeing has already spent on this project does not actually include the amount of money that they've had to spend trying to analyze and resolve any issues that may have taken place with their latest unmanned tests. It's very likely that that's going to cost them further money and drive them even further into the red, making it even more impossible for Boeing to ever turn a profit 
on this project. Now, so if this is the case, why is NASA even allowing Boeing to make a crewed mission? If they're gonna pull the plug, why not just do it now? Well, it's important to consider that the original contract actually required Boeing to make two manned flights. So if NASA were to pull the plug at this point, it would actually be a violation of contract. Boeing, like it or not, has to make two crewed flights to the ISS in order to fulfill the contract. Now, of course, they could make an agreement between each other to just go ahead and cut the whole thing off and forget about that last part of the contract. But there's another thing. NASA still desperately needs a backup for Crew Dragon, no matter how bad that backup may be. Also, they need another spacecraft capable of ISS reboost. Starliner represents both of these things. And by the way, this whole situation has come as a complete shock to just about everybody except SpaceX. For example, William Gersten Meyer, who held the position of Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operation, that's until 2019, over at NASA, thought that Star Starliner was a much stronger proposal. Well, guess what? And this again is further evidence that NASA is losing confidence in this program. He now works for SpaceX. So at this point, both Boeing and NASA have found themselves between a rock and a hard place. NASA really needs this spacecraft on a number of levels, and Boeing can't really afford to keep trying to fly it. And this is a recipe for disaster. And again, a further evidence as to why NASA continues to pay SpaceX so much money for future missions, and they have yet to pay Boeing anything for upcoming missions because they still don't have any confidence in this ship. They do seem to at least have sufficient confidence to send two, two human beings, that is, on February of 2023. And frankly, I am very, very worried about the two astronauts assigned to this mission. You have to keep in mind the Starliner was experiencing lots of problems with its thrusters during its last test. Problems that were never really resolved and problems that were never fir firmly identified either because the thrusters are located in the service module which burned up in the atmosphere. So Boeing is never really going to have an opportunity to thoroughly examine and determine what happened. Now they have a lot Lot of redundancy built into those thrusters, but if they don't work properly, especially when re-entry is coming up, that will spell disaster. Starliner will either burn up in the atmosphere or skip off the atmosphere to disappear into deep space if they don't perform the re-entry maneuver exactly right, and they won't be able to do that with faulty thrusters. This whole mission is really, really worrying me. Now, I I don't know if NASA is just as worried or if Boeing is just as worried if they're going to be completely confident that this is going to be safe, but I really don't see how they can feel that way. There were too many issues with the previous test to just say, well, we think that's what it was and just move forward. Whereas where Crew Dragon was concerned, they had an opportunity to thoroughly examine the site of the explosion, all of the equipment involved, and determine exactly what caused that. Which, by the way, is a situation that never would have taken place on an actual flight. So... We just really can't be confident in this vessel. It's just not responsible to feel that way. Now, is it responsible to put two people up on a ship that we're not sure about? Well, we did it with the space shuttle back in 1981, and everything worked out fine. NASA has been in the business of putting astronauts' lives at risk in order to further mankind's exploration of the solar system. The question is, is NASA's need for Starliners so desperate that they're willing to put human lives at risk in order to get it into service because frankly that's exactly what they're going to be doing right now. It is unfortunate but they may find themselves having to do it at least at first. But one thing is clear, if this mission in February does not go off flawlessly, I don't see how NASA can continue in good faith with this contract and I don't see 
see why Boeing would even want to. I think that Boeing is on its last legs. This is its last chance. If the whole mission goes off extremely well, then they may continue. They may have to. However, I don't think they really want to. It's just not good business. Financially, the best move for Boeing right now is to cut their losses, pull up stakes, and get the hell out of Dodge. But once again, their reputation in the public eye, their reputation with NASA, their relation with NASA procurement people, all of these things would probably be put at risk if they were to cancel things from their side. And so I think they're just desperately hoping that NASA cancels things from their side, which again is becoming more and more likely every day. And all of NASA's behavior is strongly suggesting that this is coming up very soon. Once again, we'll see what happens in February, assuming NASA allows things to get that far. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Also, I am leaving for Europe within a few hours. Please check the description for various ways to support my content because I'm going to be bringing you some very unique stuff over the next six weeks. And as always, stay angry about space.